This week we're going to be looking at the artist Rachel Ross and her vanitas setup, so like still life setups of old objects, old keys, cutlery, cooking implements, metal objects that won't perish and that have been handled for decades. She has a strong sense of nostalgia in her work and tends to choose objects that have a personal pos possession to them and a personal meaning. So she will choose utensils that are well worn and she will also tie things like small bits of ribbon around the utensils. She's particularly interested in ornate objects that she collects from antique shops. So things that other people have collected as well. So she also has things like old diaries, old letters, that are all part of her work. So what I am going to ask you to do is to choose objects around your home or that are personal to you. Um, I'd like you to con have a contrast in, in surface. So I'd quite like you to add, as well as having metal metallic objects, a more natural form, such as here is a butterfly. She also often paints eggs as well. They'll come in nice speckled or different coloured eggs. So the first stage is to collect your objects and to decide what you're going to put into your composition and how you're going to place them as well. The placement is really important. She tends to place them all upright as though they're on a board. So when you're painting them, you need to have them set out and arranged and hopefully you'll paint from life as well. So the objects that I've chosen are this old tea strainer, this small silver cup, and also the butterfly. I'm just, I'm just, that is made up. So I haven't got an actual butterfly. So I'm looking at one of her images for that. Once you have painted your background, I'd like you to then let it dry and draw out your objects and place them as compositionally as you would like them to be. The next stage is to work out where the shades and the lights and the shadows and the tones are on your objects. Now with metallic objects, you're going to have a lot of different lights and darks reflecting. You also might be able to see your own face in the handle or some part of your object. So I'd like you to attempt to paint what you see. So if you have got your face there, then I want you to try and paint it. The next stage for you is really to sort of come in with a, your darkest tones first. And I'm using a Payne's Grey mixed with black, so it's not pure black. And I've just gone around all my outlines, basically, showing the shapes and the forms of the object. And then I'm going to begin with this strainer and start putting down the darkest tones first. I'm going to be blocking in quite boldly. All the details are going to be coming later. So I'm just working out where are those darkest areas and I'm holding the object in my hand so that I can have a really close look as to where I see those darkest tones. And I'm blocking them in. So it's not pure black. What I need you to think about is mixing your colours before you start to paint so that they're ready to go. So I'm coming in with a second tone now, which is a slightly more mid-tone. And I'm putting that down where I see that. And again, if you have a nice strong light source, you're going to see more reflections on your object. And this is a really good exercise in observational painting and looking carefully at what's in front of you. So I'm tending to work on one object at a time here because they each object 
is very different. The different metals and different surfaces. So I'm just going to focus on this strainer to start with. Blocking in at the moment my mid tones. So I'm seeing a lot of mid tones around the edges and further in on the strainer and also on the handle. So I'm not covering the whole object. My next tone up, and so I've got about I've got about five tones, is a lighter grey. And what I am noticing on this is that there are other colours reflected in, which I will possibly add later. But to start off with, I'm just keeping it very simple. I'm working with those just three or four tones. Even though I can, I am seeing slightly brighter blues as well it reflected onto the metal. For this area here, where I've got all these little holes, I'm going to basically paint over the whole of the area. And then I can see my holes underneath. I've marked out and they will be put in with a white because I can actually see the underneath showing through. So I'm going to let those areas dry before I come back with some much lighter highlights on. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm gonna have a look at the silver cup, which is a different tone of metal. So it's more sort of warm. So I'm going to add some yellow to my greys to help me, a bit of yellow ochre rather than actual yellow my already mixed up tones so where again if I can see myself it reflected and I'll probably will be putting myself in and I've already marked with a wash where I want some of the tones to go so this is my darker tone coming in here which as I said I've mixed in a little, little bit of yellow ochre I'm just squinting my eyes to see tonally where things are sitting. And I'm placing those down. You do need to be using small round brush when you're working on a smaller scale like this. Um, maybe even a, I don't know, almost a 0 0.1 brush, but see how you go. This I think is a size one, naught, no, it's a size naught. So be selective about what brushes you use. So the next tone is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna mix in again, a little bit of yellow into my already mixed grey. And I'm going to start to put down the lighter tones. Now there's a pattern on this cup which I will be putting in afterwards. So any sort of detail is coming after at the moment. I'm just thinking of this in terms of shape, form, light and dark. So just taking a bit of time to work out where those tones are before you start painting really does help. And 
some of you may have a flow medium you want to add to your paints just to give it a better sort of application. So where I see the very, very light areas, the lightest use, I'll probably be putting white down, maybe with a touch of blue. And I need to sort of also think about the direction of my brush stroke. So if I'm showing something that is curved in surface, I want to show that with the direction of my brush strokes. So any things that I can see it within the reflection, I'm going to attempt to paint in as well. But that will come a little bit later. At the moment, I'm just literally just blocking in these areas and my first piece that I'd started is probably almost dry so I can come in with my much lighter tones. So I'm going to leave that, that one to dry now and I'm going to actually work into this butterfly for a little bit and then hopefully this will dry for me to work into with some much lighter tones. So I'm going to use a photograph of a piece by Rachel Ross. So I'm looking at her painting of the butterfly and what I'm going to do is start with this dark, dark sort of brown first by mixing my black with some red and also with some yellow and some blue. So I'm making my own brown. And I'm going to start with those darkest areas first. And I will be graduating outwards. using a very fine brush later. So this is just literally blocking in, showing where the dark areas are. So it's not pure black, there is, there is red, yellow, ochre, and blue mixed in with that as well. The other colour that I'm going to be using on, on this butterfly is a very um, soft cream colour. But before I add that, I want to just gradually blend in a little bit more red and yellow to make the brown slightly lighter. And therefore I can start to show the sort of the graduation I'm just dragging my brush upwards. I 
again I will come back to this and I will be working in with a much lighter cream as well. So I'll now show you the highlights on the strainer. And instead of putting just white, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny little bit of cerulean blue so that I have a graduation of the lightest areas. So I can see where the light is hitting the object. So I'm putting that down and making sure that I'm really carefully observing where it sits. And by doing this, it's going to start to bring the object to life. And I would like you to really look at the colours of the reflections in the metallic object. So if you have got your face or skin tone showing through. I would like you to put those in as well. And for this, I'm going to put the dots in where I previously marked them so that I can see underneath where they come. The more you look at these objects, the more you're going to see um, happening within them. So give yourself time to do this painting and make sure that you really study your object. So again, I'm going to keep going with the very lightest areas and just pop them in quite quickly really just to, to emphasize the shapes and the reflection reflective surface so as you can see it's quite a slow process of a painting it's not a quick painting um what i think i will probably do is send you all a picture of the finished painting so this this cup here has got some very sort of light areas which i'm going to mix up now and i'm going to add some lemon yellow to the white to give it a real glow where i see that the light areas are hitting and what you're going to notice is you tend to get light and darks sitting next to each other, which creates a really good contrast and really makes things stand out. So I'm also seeing in this cup is my own face. I'm going to get a tiny bit of red added to some white with a tiny bit of yellow to start to make a flesh tone. Now, because it's so it's blurred, I'm just going to suggest it. And I'll be blending it in as well a little bit more. So I can barely see my features, but I might suggest my jumper is quite dark. I can see that reflected. So I'm going to put that in with some Payne's Grey. And all the little details of the markings 
over the top of the surface. I'm going to put those in with a, the, my smallest brush and make sure that I don't overdo them. I'm just putting them in as small little dashes. Butterfly itself, I'm going to come in with a cream colour. So I'm mixing up my white with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. And I will start to blend my tone of cream in to the wings. Now again, this, this is going to be a slow process too so I'm going to put down this first and then over the top of it I'll come in with a much finer brush your background colour is, is up to you what you choose but I would make it so that obviously so your objects are going to stand out so it could either be very very dark or a sort of more pale muted colour. So think that through. I'm going to go back now and let that dry to this, this first part of my painting and I'm going to start to put in some even brighter light tones. This time, I'm not going to put so much blue in. I'm just going to use pure white, just so that it really does sort of shine and stand out. So I'm putting it on top of where I've put some of the other areas, and I'm just literally just making the edges brighter. As you can see, this is not yet finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now, but I will share the finished painting with you um, on our WhatsApp. So good luck with your paintings and thank you for watching.